So what you have is a offer or this is the person that's going to make the offer. What is a more common word that you and I probably are going to call them, right? It's the buyer, the buyer. The buyer is the one that makes the initial offer To whom? Well, hopefully you've caught on to this game. The offer E, the one receiving the offer. You and I are probably going to call this person what? A seller. All right. So what you have is this offer where the buyer makes an offer to the seller and in that offer are the set of conditions in which he is willing to go through with this contract. You know, he's going to offer a price. Uh, I want to close in 30 days. It's $250,000. I don't want any concessions from the seller. That is his offer to the offeree or the seller. Now, when that offer comes in to the seller, there are several things that seller could do with that offer. Let's talk about the first and easiest one. He could flat out reject the offer. Nope, too low, don't even want to deal with this guy, let it die. That's the first option that the seller would have or the offeree could have. The second option is he could accept the offer. Yes, I like that offer. Let's accept it. The third option is what? Exactly. He could counter that offer. He could counter the offer back to that person. Now, here's some very important things you need to understand about a counter. A counter offer is a legal rejection of the original offer. And once that person counters back, the original offer is now legally dead. Okay? So, Let's say the offeror or the buyer writes an offer to the offeree or the seller for a property and he offers $200,000 as his offer on the property that's listed for $230,000. So he's below the asking price. And the seller or the offeree says, you know what? I want to counter back to him. So he counters back at 210,000 and then the seller changes his mind and goes, you know, actually, I guess I'm not going to argue over that 10 grand. I'll go ahead and accept that offer. No, he cannot because once he countered back, that original offer is now dead and the original offeror is not obligated or held to that offer. So once you counter, the original offer is dead, all right? And you can counter offer as many times as you see fit or that it takes. And hopefully at some point you will get to an acceptance by both parties, all right? Now, you could get to a rejection. That's happened many, many times. I've been involved in deals where they've countered a price and back and forth and back and forth. And the buyer finally says, hey, my final offer is 208. And the seller says, well, I am not going below 209. And they can never come to terms. And it ends up in a rejection. They just never come to terms. That could happen. 
but you hope that you want to get to an acceptance. All right. So now let me ask you a question. What does this word mean? What I want you to do is think about this for a second, hit the pause and stop and think about if you can explain to me what acceptance really means. All right, hit pause. All right, so we're back and I'll bet you didn't hit pause. <laughs> now, in class, I get a lot of people saying, well, both parties agree. No, that's not it. I get answers of, well, one party signs it. No, that's not what acceptance means either. All right. So the question is, how many of you are golfers out there? Anybody? Anybody? What is the most amount of money you have ever paid for a round of golf? All right. Any? I'll tell you the most amount of money I've ever paid for a round of golf was $49,000. <laughs> All right. Now, before you fall off your chair laughing, let me explain the story. So I had a listing years ago with a good friend of mine. And honestly, the only thing that saved us in this was the fact that he was a good friend of mine. It's the only thing that saved my butt, all right? I had his $700,000 house listed at 7% commission. Now, you can quickly see that 7% of 700,000 is 49 grand. So what happened was, now, remember, I'm old. I actually was in this business before cell phones, all right? So, well, actually, I was in this business before cell phones, but I was also in this business before the smartphone. So the Nokia little phone, you know, it was about that big, had just come out, and they were, if you were really cool, you had a Nokia phone. So I was on my way to go golfing, and another agent called me and said, hey, Raymond, we're going to make an offer full price on your listing out in Plainfield, Indiana. And I said, great. I have left my fax machine on, which should be a second clue on how old I am. Go ahead and send the offer over and I'll get to it when I get back golfing. <clears throat> so he said, OK. So I immediately call my client and I'm like, hey, Manny, we have got an offer coming in at full price. And he said, well, we'll, we'll accept that. And I'm like, duh, full price. I said, I'm on my way to the golf course. Let me finish the round of golf. I'll go back to my office, get the offer and come and find you. He said, OK, thank you. You're the best agent in the world. I said, I know that. And. So I went and played golf. About four hours later, I went back to the uh, office and on my fax machine was the original offer that the other agent had told me about. On top of that offer, about an hour and a half later, according to the timestamp, was the rescinding or the recension of that offer. A rescension is where you pull back your offer and you can rescind any contract prior to it being accepted. You can rescind it. And on my timestamp after that was the rescension of the offer. Now, my question is, how were they able to rescind it? Because Manny told me they had already accepted it. So that should give you some clue as to what I'm asking when I say define that word accept. What does that mean? What that means is both parties have to know 
it has been accepted. The fact that Manny and I, let's see if I can do this on the screen, on this side of the table had agreed to accept it, but we did not tell the other side. They were sitting at the office, all fat, dumb, and happy, not knowing what was going on. So they rescinded the offer. So the definition of acceptance is that both parties must know. All right. One of my favorite quotes in the whole wide world, you can look this up, is by a Supreme Court justice called Potter Stewart. Potter Stewart was involved in a case, believe it or not, that dealt with a film that one city deemed as pornographic. The director of the movie claimed it was art. The city said it was pornographic and they would not show the uh, film. He sued the conflict between art and pornography actually got elevated all the way to the United States Supreme Court. And Potter Stewart, the justice, actually wrote the uh, letter. And in his letter, he had this famous quote. Look it up. I cannot define pornography, but I know it when I see it. All right. And this film is not pornographic in nature. So the director actually won the court case. But the point I'm getting at is you think you know what acceptance means? Can you define it? Both parties must know it's been accepted. All right. So what should I have done? Now, there's always a question that says, could I have called the other agent and said, hey, talk to my client. We are going to accept that. Yes, I could have. Would that have been valid? Think. No. Statute of frauds says it must be in writing. Now, it probably would have been better than just not doing anything, which is what this guy did. I went and golfed. <laughs> what I should have done was stop the car, turn around, go back to my office, get the offer, go find Manny, have him sign the acceptance and fax it back to them so that both parties knew it was accepted. All right. There's an, another saying that says an offer held close to your chest is no offer at all. What they're saying is exactly the same thing. The fact that Manny and I on this side of the table agreed we did not communicate it to the other side of the table. Therefore, it technically was not accepted, which allowed them to rescind the offer. So now I've got to call my client and explain to him why we did not get a full price offer on his house. Now, like I said, Manny happened to be a good friend of mine. And we ended up selling the house for full price in a couple weeks later. But the fact was, I did not let the other side know. Now, I will tell you, on the next offer was a Friday evening. I drove back to my office, got the offer, went and found Manny, had him sign it, went back to my office, faxed it over, called the other agent and said, hey, dude, I just faxed you back the acceptance on this deal all in about 45 minutes to an hour because I wasn't going to lose that again, all right? So literally, because I lost the sale, that golf round cost me $49,000. Now, I eventually got it. And I know what some of you are saying. Yeah, I gave half of that, 3.5% to the other side. But the initial loss kind of sh shocked me, all right? Now, well, I will preface that by saying that was the days of the Nokia phone. Now with the iPhone and the smartphone, this can happen so quickly because what would have happened is the other agent would have emailed me the offer. I would have seen it on my phone. I would have forwarded that email to Manny and he would have e-signed it under the UTA law, the UETA. He would have came back to me. I would have then re-forwarded that signed uh 
back to the original agent all while I'm driving. <laughs> no, don't text and drive, all right? I saw a girl the other day that was texting and driving and it made me so mad. I actually rolled my window down and threw my beer at her. Yeah. So now it's kind of hard be, to miss to mess this up because it can ha actually happen so quickly. All right. So with the offer, there must be an acceptance. And there are ways you could flat out reject it. You could revoke it. And there's this thing called a time frame. That's the one that we didn't really talk about inside of the rejection you are given a time frame with which to respond. If you know anything about politics or you like the politics, there's a term called a pocket veto. A pocket veto is where he does, the president doesn't really say no. He just ignores it until the time frame expires and it automatically is no. That way he can say, well, I didn't veto that bill. No, I just let it die. You can do that with an offer. Sometimes that's probably the most common rather than flat out rejecting it when the uh, buyer sends an offer over and says, hey, I need to know by tomorrow at 5 p.m. The seller just never responds. All right. And at 501, that offer is now dead because there is a time frame that is placed upon that offer. And there has to be a time frame if you think about it, because you don't want that buyer hanging around three and four weeks or six weeks because he couldn't be looking at other properties. So typically when you work for the buyer as the selling agent, you will write an offer and you will put a time frame. What that time frame is, I can't tell you because it could it, it varies. It could be an hour, it could be two or three days. And that time frame usually depends on how you wrote the offer. There is this word that we call hair. Did the deal have a lot of hair on it? Meaning, did you ask for buyer's assistance? Did you ask for a whole bunch of closing costs? Are there a whole bunch of conditions where there's a whole bunch of moving parts? You may want the seller a couple days to think about it before he says yes. As opposed to you're like, oh, dude, I'm offering you full price cash, close in 10 days. I want to know inside an hour. If you ever watch Shark Tank, they do that. You know, I'll make you an offer, but you got to answer in the next 20 seconds. So the time frame to respond is varies and depends on the actual offer. You're, you'll learn more about that when you deal with your broker. He will educate you on how that you can do that. 